Hi, I'm Nigel, and this is Nigel Goes to Space. One of the great things about going into space, which I'll be doing in a couple of years, is to be weightless, to feel you're away from Earth's gravity, to float around the cabin inside the spaceship with my fellow passengers looking down on Earth, of course, way down below us at the same time. And as part of my astronaut training, I've already done the weightless training. This is the flight suit that I wore for that. And you can see, well, my name is upside down here. There's a reason for that. I'll talk about that a, a bit later on. But you might say, how can we get away from the Earth's gravity and train? I haven't been into space, so how could I actually do it on the Earth? And that really comes back to what is gravity? When you think about it, when the astronauts went to the moon, they didn't get away from the Earth's gravity because the moon moves around the Earth because it's held by the gravity of our own planet. So nobody, no human being has been totally away from the Earth's gravity. But we can feel the effects of weightlessness. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to show you my gravity probe. Now, NASA launched a satellite called Gravity Probe B, which cost almost a billion dollars and went around the Earth. This is my gravity probe, my gravity probe A, the good old uh, Isaac Newton kind of probe, an apple. Now, Newton's apple fell from the tree. If we toss the apple up in the air, it goes in a path we call a parabola, that curved path like that. Now, suppose I take mini me, a little spaceman like this, and I throw him up in the air. He goes along the same path as the apple. So if I do this in slow motion, if the apple and the spaceman are traveling together, the spaceman doesn't actually stand on the apple. He doesn't feel any force holding him down to the apple. He's floating above the apple. So relative to the apple, he actually is basically weightless. And that's what I did, not on a giant apple, I hasten to add, on an aeroplane, which is specially adapted. It's called the Vomit Comet. It's a specially adapted Boeing 727 plane, which flies that kind of a path through the atmosphere. It's called the Vomit Comet, in case you're wondering, because some people experience motion sickness. Uh, and um, in case that happens to you, you're provided with your special bag that you take up for use if you do feel not all that well. I, as you can see, I've still got my bag. I was okay on that flight. From the outside, the Vomit Comet plane looks like any other commercial aircraft. And when you board, it's much the same thing. You have a, a boarding pass uh, to get on board with. It says, nothing on earth like the weightless experience. And then at the back of the plane, there's a row of seats and you sit down and you strap yourself in. And for takeoff, you have, for legal reasons, you have to go through the usual procedures. So you're told to fasten your seat belts, put your seat backs upright, fold away the tray tables in front of you, and we take off and we go up to 24,000 feet in just the normal way and you chat to your fellow passengers. Uh, and in my case, I was next to um, a chap from El Salvador, El Salvador's only astronaut, and in fact, a medical doctor, a brain surgeon by profession. So you get to know your fellow passengers too. And when we get to altitude, we get out of our seats, we go up to the front part of the plane and that area is covered with padding throughout. There aren't any windows, you can't see out. And one of the reasons is that as the pilot starts to go up into the loop, you're going up at 45 degrees. And if you're looking out of the window, you could get pretty disorientated because the horizons obviously uh, skew with as you're looking at, down at it. Uh, and then he goes up over the top of the loop and as the plane falls away from you, you start to experience the weightless conditions. On the first loop, we didn't experience full weightlessness. Uh, they build up to it, and that's part of the fun. They pretend you're on Mars for the first loop, so you have one third of Earth's gravity. The pilots fly a special path, so you experience one third of ordinary gravity, and that means you can push off, you can float around a bit in the cabin, push off from the sides, and uh, it's a lot different from our planet. A third of Earth's gravity still sounds like a lot, but you do really notice a huge difference. And then as we go through the bottom of the loop, you get pushed down into the floor. It's like a roller coaster. As you go over the top, you're flung upwards. As you go over the, down the bottom, you're pushed back in your seat and you're pushed down to 1.8 Earth gravity. So you're almost twice as heavy as normal life. And that's where you have to be a bit careful not to get nauseous. What they say is that if you turn your head under the high gravity conditions, you could begin to feel a bit ill. So you should lie on your back like that, look up at a point on the ceiling overhead, and even if somebody talks to you, don't look sideways, just focus on the ceiling until we go up into our next zero gravity loop. The next part of our flight took us to the moon, effectively. The pilots flew the plane in a loop such that we had one sixth of Earth's gravity. That's the gravity you experience on the moon. And that was quite amazing because I talked to the guys next to me and we all thought we were weightless. You could push yourself off the floor, up to the plane ceiling and down again. Uh, uh, but it was 
moon's gravity and it made me realise it's just as well the Apollo astronauts who walked on the moon between 1969 and 1972 had those really heavy spacesuits and backpacks on because they would really have had a problem being as light as they are on the Earth. They would have just floated. They would have spent half their time just off the ground. So that helped them to anchor them down, as it were. And then into the next phase of the high gravity, preparing for true weightlessness. So far, we've had one loop experiencing Mars's gravity and two feeling what it's like to be on the moon. The next is going to be true weightless for the next 12 loops on the aeroplane. And it was an unforgettable experience as we came over the top of the loop because we couldn't see the loop. We were inside the plane. We couldn't see what was happening outside. We just knew that we got lighter and lighter and then literally just lifted off, off the floor of the aeroplane. Everybody gasped. It was as if somebody had waved a magic wand and said, levitate. You just floated above the, above the floor. And of course, you try to sit up, you push yourself off the floor and you head up. Oh, there isn't a floor in a ceiling anymore. You're, you're weightless. All the surfaces are the same. You can get up the ceiling, you can push yourself off the side of the plane, you float around. And the problem here comes if you're in the middle of the plane and you can't reach the walls or the ceiling or the floor and you're just hanging there. And when you get to your training, your flight training beforehand, they say to you, don't swim. And I thought, what does that mean? But you quickly learn if you're hanging around, not able to touch anything, feeling weightless, you're generally in a swimming pool. And what you do, of course, is you try to swim your way to somewhere and everybody did it and I did it. And if you're floating in the middle of an aeroplane in the middle of the air and you try doing that, you're not going to move anywhere. All you do is to bash the people next to you. So I'm actually rather pleased that the other astronauts on my flight into space will have this kind of a training because otherwise we'll all be there if we're weightless for the first time in space and all we're going to do is swimming and bashing each other. Um, but once you get orientated in, in the weightless uh, condition, and we did 12 loops of being weightless, you very quickly pick it up and you can walk across the floor and walk up the walls and walk across the ceiling and come back down. You could do somersaults. I think we all did different things. For me, the somersault I managed to perfect, which was wonderful, just tumbling over and over in weightlessness. And some people had a, some water and you can get the drops of water and they float around, of course, and try to catch them in your mouth. Each loop was 30 seconds of weightlessness. We, on that Aeroplane flight, you can't stay weightless for more, longer than 30 seconds at a time, but we had 12 goes at it, so we had about six minutes of weightlessness altogether. As we get towards the end of the flight, we build up to the climax, the most spectacular experience. Going through the bottom part of the loop when we have the high gravity, this time we land, lie on our front, with hands stretched out in front of us like that, and as we go over the top of the loop and we experience zero gravity, the instructor says, fly like Superman. We push off with our feet and fly down the plane, hands in front of us, just like being Superman in the movies. And then it's back to Earth in more ways than one. The plane lands again, we step out, and of course it's one gravity, ordinary Earth gravity. But there's an initiation ceremony. Because we've been weightless, our instructor takes the name badge, which until now has been upside down, turns it the right way up to show that we have been weightless human beings. And there are souvenirs to keep. I've got my flight suit and I've got my silver socks showing I was part of the silver team on this particular flight. And there's a certificate that we get to take back with us. And it says, this certifies that Nigel Henbest has defied gravity, communed with floating objects, levitated, and otherwise successfully completed the zero G weightless experience. And you don't have to be an astronaut to do the weightless experience. These courses are available to anyone who wants to take them up in various countries around the world. And there are special things you can do. If you take a flight out of Las Vegas, you can even get married in weightlessness to take your vows floating around in zero gravity. But uh, just remember, don't let go of your wedding ring. Well, I'd better be flying off now, but if you've got any questions about the weightless experience or anything else to do with going into space or about astronomy and the universe in general, please contact me with your questions and I'll answer anything you want to know. And also subscribe to Naked Science and join me again on Nigel Goes to Space in a couple of weeks' time.